A sensor designed to save lives ends up sending a plane straight into the ground. A battery design meant to save space ends up exploding in people's hands. And an engine flaw buried deep in the production line causes 100 plus deaths and puts millions of drivers at risk. These are all real world cases with huge financial losses and where lives were negatively impacted or lost. These failures weren't accidents, they were the result of poor judgment and real engineering decisions related to design, materials, tolerances, packaging, and cost trade-offs. It's pretty interesting because in every case, you could make a strong argument that it was the engineer's fault. If you're watching this, you're probably an engineer or studying engineering, and I want all of you to understand that engineering is never just technical. It goes way beyond that, and it's ethical. As engineers, we all have a moral responsibility to make the world a better place. That includes solving problems with care, obsessing over the details, and never letting cost or convenience outweigh safety. Just remember, anything you're designing, whether it's an airplane, treadmill, or smartphone, what you choose to ignore can cost lives. So in this video, I'll break down some of the biggest engineering failures related to mechanical engineering, the root causes behind them, and the lessons that every mechanical engineer should take away. Let's start with one of the biggest biggest failures in aerospace history. On January 28, 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger disintegrated just 73 seconds after liftoff, killing all seven astronauts on board. The cause was failure of the primary and secondary O-rings in the right rocket booster. These O-rings became less elastic in cold temperatures, which is such a basic concept we all learn in material science. It was only about 30 degrees Fahrenheit and the engineers from Morton Theoko, who was NASA's contractor that manufactured the rocket booster, expressed their concern and recommended against launching below 53 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the minimum temperature at which they knew the O-rings would seal at. Under immense pressure to launch, management overruled their concerns and went ahead anyway. What's devastating about this incident is how preventable it was. These O-rings were sealing a high-pressure joint in the right rocket booster and engineers had seen evidence of erosion before, but it was ignored. When the two O-rings failed, this allowed hot gas to escape and rupture the fuel tank, causing the shuttle to tragically explode mid-air. While you could argue that this was a failure in design and material selection, it was more so the result of poor communication, management, and organizational culture. When the risk is this high, the smallest component can take down the entire system. When you're an engineer, in this situation, you have to speak up until someone listens. Even though engineers presented data showing that lower temperatures significantly increased the risk of O-ring erosion, Morton Theoko's management overrode their engineers and gave NASA the green light to launch. They were under pressure from NASA's management and feared the impact a delay would have on contracts and the schedule. One of the key takeaways here is the importance of communication. As engineers, we need to be able to clearly articulate our thoughts, explain risks, and convince non-technical stakeholders in high-stake situations. But the truth is, sometimes it doesn't matter how right you are. If leadership doesn't want to listen, or if the culture doesn't value engineering judgment, the system's already broken. You can do everything right and still be ignored. And when that happens, it's not the engineer's fault. More than three decades later, the aerospace industry would face another catastrophic failure, this time in commercial aviation. Two separate incidents involving Boeing 737 MAX aircraft crashed within five months of each other in 2018 and 2019 and killed 346 people in total. The Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation or MCAS system is a feature designed by Boeing to push the nose down to prevent stalls because the 737 MAX had larger engines that altered the plane's aerodynamics. The system relied on data from a single angle of attack sensor. This made the MCAS system extremely vulnerable to malfunctions if the sensor provided incorrect readings. It just so happens that in both crashes, the angle of attack sensor provided erroneous readings, indicating that the plane was in danger of stalling when it was not. The MCAS then activated repeatedly, pushing the plane's nose down without pilot input. The actuator controlling the horizontal 
horizontal stabilizer followed the commands with no safeguards. And the crazy thing is pilots initially weren't even told that the MCAS system existed in the manual. You could say that this was a simple software failure, but I look at it as a mechanical systems failure of sensors, actuators, and the entire architecture, and that it was entirely preventable. It's so vital that the systems we design have redundancies and fail safes built in to account for potential software and hardware malfunctions. The idea of fail safe design ensures that if something goes wrong, it doesn't lead to catastrophic failure, but rather to a safe controlled response. In the design analysis and production of an integrated system, all engineers, be it mechanical, electrical, or software, should be aligned on a goal of ensuring safety and robustness. Now moving from the sky to the road, the automotive industry has seen its fair share of deadly engineering mistakes. Over 30 million General Motor vehicles were recalled in 2014 with the fatal ignition switch flaw. While driving the switch could slip from run to accessory or off mode and cut power to the engine, airbags, power steering, and brakes. This defect led to 124 deaths, hundreds of injuries, and General Motors paying over $2.5 billion in settlements, fines, and recalls. The cause behind all of this was quite simple. The switch failed to meet General Motors vibration and torque specification, which was between 10 and 20 newton centimeters. However, during testing, results showed that a torque less than 10 newton centimeters could easily cause the switch to change modes and a bump or heavy keychain could rotate it. The crazy thing is that General Motors engineers and lawyers knew about this since 2005, but the documentation was so vague and the switch design was changed without assigning it a new part number, making the problem impossible to trace. What's even more mind-blowing is that upper management didn't learn about the defect until the January of 2014. So while this was a mechanical design failure, one as basic as the torque required to turn a key, the deeper issue was cultural and ethical in nature. As engineers, we have a responsibility to document changes transparently, escalate safety critical issues as soon as they arise, and never be afraid to admit when something goes wrong. We cannot cut corners, hide issues, or prioritize costs over people. Moving on, there are a handful of notable mishaps related to batteries. Shortly after launch, Boeing 787 Dreamliner suffered multiple lithium-ion battery fires due to internal defects. As a result, the entire 787 fleet was grounded globally in January 2013. The entire thermal management system was inadequate and the batteries were poorly contained against thermal runaway. Boeing's original battery enclosure design did not adequately contain a fire or vent smoke and gases safely in the event of failure. The Federal Aviation Administration also failed to identify this design deficiency during the type design certification process. Luckily, no one was hurt or injured, and Boeing redesigned the battery system by adding fireproof enclosures, venting tubes, better monitoring, and more robust insulation. So the key takeaways from this incident is that failure analysis methods like FMEA and numerical simulations are crucial and risk assessments must account for for real world manufacturing variation and worst case failure modes. The Dreamliner was the first commercial aircraft to heavily rely on lithium ion batteries. While this was innovative, it introduced new risks. Cutting edge technology must be paired with robust testing, fail safes, and proven safety margins. But we also have to remember that it's not entirely Boeing's fault. The defective batteries were supplied by GS USA, nope. sorry if I butchered the name, due to manufacturing process flaws. System integrators like Boeing must audit, verify, and validate suppliers' quality assurance processes, especially when dealing with high-risk components. Believe it or not, Boeing wasn't the only one to underestimate the risk of batteries. Just a few years later, the same problem hit the palms of people's hands. Samsung's Galaxy Note 7 began catching fire and exploding shortly after release in 2016. Over 2.5 million units were recalled, and just two months later, 
Samsung seized production of the device. Though no lives were lost, there were dozens of injuries, property damage, and Samsung experienced $5.3 billion in losses. The cause of these fires was that the original battery produced by Samsung SDU was packed too tightly and contained a design flaw that made electrodes on the top right of the battery susceptible to bending. This weakened separation between positive and negative taps of the battery, resulting in thermal runaway and short circuits. Samsung did their first recall for the Galaxy Note 7 and re-versioned it with new batteries from another supplier in China, CATL, who also supplies batteries to Apple. However, as Murphy's Law would have it, the new redesign introduced welding defects and sharp burrs that penetrated the separator layer. So as mechanical engineers, we have to remember that great design is meaningless without manufacturing feasibility and margin for error. The tolerances we call out must account for real world production variability and should be determined using tolerance stack up analysis. To compete with the iPhone, Samsung rushed to redesign the original phone with new ones using a new battery, which also caught fire due to unrelated issues. A rushed fix, especially in engineering, can exacerbate and worsen the problem. Effective recalls and redesigns require rigorous root cause analysis before redeployment. And lithium ion battery systems always design for thermal runaway containment, not just prevention. Internal quality control is critical to product safety and quality safety standards and oversight must be prioritized. Now, before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that was essential in teaching me how to think more like an engineer was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. It helps you get smarter every day with thousands of hands-on lessons in math, physics, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant breaks down problems using a first principles approach. Their lessons develop problem solving skills by allowing you to experiment with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lecture-based learning. Brilliant's lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you learn from the best. Brilliant also fosters critical thinking through active learning, not memorization, so you become a strong problem solver. It also helps promote the habit of daily learning essential for both personal and professional growth. Brilliant's interactive bite-sized lessons allow you to learn on the go and make the most of your time. One of my favorites is Brilliant's scientific thinking course that teaches you to think like an engineer as you design electric circuits, gear systems, and bridges. To try out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild or scan the QR code on the screen or you can check out the link in the description below. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now we have to remember that mechanical engineers don't just design complex systems. The chair, sofa, or bed you're sitting on was also designed by mechanical engineers. Sometimes it's your everyday products that pose the greatest risk. The Peloton Tread Plus treadmill caused over 70 injuries and one child's death before it was recalled in 2021. Its elevated deck and lack of rear guard allowed children and pets to be pulled under the roller and there was no auto shutoff. Watching that video just gives me goosebumps. Peloton initially resisted recalling the product, insisting users follow safety guidelines. As engineers, we're obligated to consider how uninformed or vulnerable users like children or pets might interact with the product, even if it's not the quote unquote intended use case. Relying on instructions and user responsibility isn't enough. Inherently safer design should always take precedence over assuming that users will behave perfectly. Design products to be dummy proof, not just work well when used properly. Very simple passive safety features leveraging, in the case of a treadmill, a combination of sensors and mechanical hardware would significantly reduce risk in the event that things go wrong. Another example of common products that turn deadly, believe it or not, is Ikea's mom dresser. At least eight children died from dressers tipping over. The narrow depth and extendable drawers caused unstable center of gravity. The drawers required wall anchoring, which many users didn't follow. Products that are tall and heavy must be designed with intrinsic stability, even under unexpected loads or misuse. Engineers must test for tip over scenarios as part of standard design. Although these drawers were designed for adults, children interacted with them in ways that weren't accounted for, 
like climbing onto them. IKEA provided wall anchoring kits, but many users didn't use them and weren't aware of their importance. If a product like drawers requires anchoring or anything to be safe, engineers must clearly communicate that risk in the installation instructions and consider built-in anti-tip solutions like weighted bases or drawer interlocks. Now, mechanical engineering and engineering in general spans a wide range of disciplines and areas, design, analysis, testing, manufacturing, quality assurance, systems integration, etc. But regardless of your specific role, the ethical responsibility is shared by all engineers. Our work shapes the safety, reliability, and the integrity of the products that people use every day. And when we neglect details, ignore warnings, and allow cost and convenience to override sound engineering judgment, the outcomes are usually never good. So whatever part of engineering we're in, we should always be taking our role seriously. It's our responsibility to ask hard questions, challenge assumptions, obsess over details, and speak up when something feels off. When something fails, it doesn't fail in CAD on a computer. It fails in someone's living room, in the sky, Guy or on the highway. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully after watching this, you're able to think more about the ethical aspect of engineering and to make the things that you design, analyze, test, and optimize better and safer for the world. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about why you need math for mechanical engineering, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.